In this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know about setting up the back channel mode in the Rodecaster Pro 2 audio mixer. This is a brand new feature that was not included in the original Rodecaster Pro, but in this video, we're going to show you what it is. We're going to show you three different ways to set it up. We're going to show you some ways that you can't use this feature and some tips and tricks along the way to make sure that you get the most out of this feature for your production. First of all, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that we have in this video, the mics, the cables, the mixer, anything like that, we have links down in the description below with current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. So first of all, what is back channel mode? Back channel mode is a really cool way of separating your production into two halves. One half of your production will stay on air, whether you're recording a podcast, live stream, anything like that. The recording will keep going and that half of it will go on as normal. The second half of your production will get put into a back channel where that you can bring in remote guests, communicate with somebody one on one. You can bring them up to speed. You can give them context as to what's happening. You can tell them to knock it off. You can tell them to dial it down. You can tell them to bring up a topic. Whatever you need to communicate to that other guest, it puts you into a separate room that's offline outside of the stereo mix so you can communicate privately and your production will have much higher production value because of this feature. Now, Rode does have a couple rules with this. There are some things that you cannot do with this feature. First of all, any back channel that you create must include the host. So if you know that you're needing to bring somebody online and you have a specific person that you need to do that, make sure they're on microphone input number one because otherwise you can't isolate them or you have to choose to bring them with the host into that back channel. So that is important to note. The host has to be involved in the back channel. The second thing is USB output number one cannot be involved in the back channel. Rode is kind of protecting you here. They don't want you to accidentally put your main stereo output, your live stream, your recording. Most people use a separate laptop to do that. They don't want any chance that that other laptop goes into the back channel and you miss the main content. So for that reason, I think they've excluded USB output number one, the main mix, from being able to be in a back channel. This still opens up everything else. Your USB number one chat channel is fair game. Bluetooth and your USB number two. So if you have a separate laptop, that's what I would use to bring in a remote guest of that type. Okay, so let's show you the first way to set this up. The first way to set this up is to assign it to a smart pad. Let's do that now. So let's go settings, smart pads. We'll go to smart pad number one. It's currently in effect, so we do need to clear this out. We'll clear that out. Then we'll select it again. We need a mixer effect. Then we can scroll over to back channel. Here's our back channel menu here. So this is super cool. So at the top, you can choose whether you want it latching or momentary. I think you always want it latching. You don't want to be holding the button while a back channel is going on, unless you do want it really dynamic and you just want to say one word to one person. But I think most people will want it latched. Then you get to select who you want involved in the back channel. Now, a couple notes here. If I select number two, you can see I still cannot deselect number one. So Host has to be involved. And of course, you do not see USB output one. You see USB chat number one, but you do not see the main USB number one. You see USB two and Bluetooth. Other than that, you can toggle anybody that you want involved into your back channel. So let's quickly just say that I want a Bluetooth back channel and I want to just have the host with the Bluetooth there. Then I can hit OK. While we're at it here, let's just quickly make a second one. I'm going to clear this out, clear that out. As you can see, this is pretty quick to put together. Once you know what you're doing, you can quickly dial this up. So let's put the host with USB number two as the second back channel. Now we have two helpful back channels. I can bring in the Bluetooth guest, kick them off. Then I can go over and bring in a laptop guest and then kick them off. That's great. So I'm going to go back to the main menu here. Okay, so one thing to note here is that when I turn on this back channel, you would expect that microphone one goes offline with the Bluetooth channel. I believe I have it mapped to this fader right now. So that means that we will see the main stereo mix go dead. When that happens, I'm just going to quickly grab the Rode NT1 here and bring it in so I can still talk to you about what's happening. 
So let's turn that on. Okay, so here I have the Rode NT1 in the game now. What I tried to point out there is that the meter for the SM7B, even though I'm in a back channel, you can see that that's indicated by these yellow buttons now. You can see yellow there and there. And also on the screen, you can see two yellow uh, channels. So you can see, tell that they're in a back channel. But the meter still moves on channel number one, but the stereo mix went completely dead. So I'm going to try that again just so you can see it. So that is the proof that they are actually in the back channel, isolated from the stereo mix. Even though the individual levels will move, that's actually helpful because then you can make sure that you're setting everybody's levels correctly. That's probably why they left it in there. But the main stereo mix, anybody that's yellow, is isolated from the main stereo mix. So that's super cool. Okay, so let's turn that off. And then let's toggle it back to the other one. So here, I'm back on the Rode NT1 because I'm obviously isolated. You can see that the Shure SM7B is isolated with that USB 2. So I can toggle them both on at the same time. So if I want host to be with Bluetooth or if I want host to be with USB, I can toggle them all on and stack them. So that's super, super helpful. I'm going to turn them off now. Now, another way that you can create a back channel on the fly is by selecting the solo button with the mute button at the same time and then selecting several channels. So if I do that on channel 1, channel 5, and channel 6, you can see that I'm creating a back channel there, which is super cool. So you don't even need to do it on the smart pad. If something comes up and you quickly need to get offline with one or two guests, that's another really powerful way to do it. And then you can just deselect them in the order that you selected them. As I said before, of course, the host is always involved, so you cannot get around that. Now, one thing that you need to look out for here is if you look at channel number one, you can see that I didn't fully deselect it out of the back channel, so it is still in a back channel of its own. So let's quickly select both of the buttons on that channel. Now you can see that that gradient went away. Now you can hear the Shure SM7B again, and I can turn off the Rode NT1. So that is something that might catch you up. If you're not watching things very carefully, it would be easy to miss that. I've missed that a couple times as well. So always watch those gradients at the bottom. But one other thing that you can do, let's go bring the road up again, is you can pre-select some channels for the back channel. You can go six, then five, and that back channel does not open until you select number one. Then you can see that the yellow there goes live and the back channel opens up. And then we can deselect this again. If we move that down on the road, you can see that the main stereo mix is actually getting the Shure SM7B. So this is working right. So you can cue them up as a back channel, and then that back channel opens up once you bring number one in. That's probably a little bit more advanced than most people care to know about, but that is some functionality that you get there. Now, one other way that you can do a back channel, so say you're in a full-size podcast studio, your producer is in a room of their own, and you have three guests that are in a room of their own. Of course, there is a manual back channel way here. The host can keep running the show by, their, by themselves, and you can just turn down the faders of all the guests that are in their isolated room. They can take their headphones off, read their notes, discuss what they're doing next, while the host continues the show. And then when the host is ready to bring the other guest back in, he simply brings up the faders. Of course, you could do this with mute buttons as well if you have a mix dialed in that you want to preserve. So there are some. that's the third way that you can set up an in-person back channel if you needed to. I hope this video has been helpful. It can be quite technical, but it's a really cool tool, I think. If you do have any questions or if there's something that you've done with the back channel mode that's a little bit more advanced of this as well, I'd love to hear what you're doing. Always looking to le learn more, so please do leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see here, we have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.